Today I'm going to introduce the simple hinge articulator. Uh, this articulator uh, is limited in its inaccurate hinge opening and closing arcs about a fixed axis. So it has no resemblance to the workings of the mandibular jaw. The maximum intercuspation position is the only position that can be reproduced with this articulator. Dentate casts are mounted without use of a face bow. It is used to hold dentate casts in the intercuspal position but allows the cast to be separated for manufacturing dental appliances. The articulator also allows for the maintenance of the vertical dimensions during denture repairs or relining. This video shows the process of attaching the casts to the articulator. To prepare the models for attachment to the hinge articulator, we should first score the base of the models to provide a relocation groove in case the models become separated from the plaster at a later time. We now locate the two models together in the correct occlusal position using a small application of sticky wax. Now the upper and lower models are firmly held in place, we're ready to proceed with the articulation process. The hinge articulator should be prepared with the upper arm only able to move along the vertical axis. To do this we ensure that the side locking nut is screwed tightly in and locked into position. It's essential that there's no lateral movement of the upper arm. However, we need to allow full vertical travel in the upper arm and we can do this by loosening the set height screw. Finally, we lubricate the upper and lower arms of the articulator with petroleum jelly. For hinge articulation, the models must be moistened in order to prevent the plaster from drying out too quickly. In addition to this, the arms of the articulator should be applied with petroleum jelly so that they can be easily removed from the plaster later. We apply a small amount of plaster to the polythene sheet and sink the lower arm of the articulator into it ensuring that the solid metal base is pressed firmly against the bench. Building up the plaster over the lower arm, we position the moistened models central to the articulator. It's also important to make sure that the occlusal surfaces of the models are level with the bench. We can do this with a set of dividers, by placing the two points of the dividers on the bench and checking that the raised point is touching equal points of the occlusal table in all directions. Next we apply more plaster to the upper model and sink the arm into it, before applying still more over the top of it with sufficient depth to give it the required strength. We can use a spatula to smooth the plaster, attempting to leave the top and base horizontal and therefore level with the occlusal table. The side walls should be smoothed until they're parallel with the side walls of the model. With a horizontal top and base and vertical sides, it will make it easy for us to recognise any issues with the setting of the teeth. We can continue to shape the plaster further with a plaster knife as it goes through various stages of setting, but most of it is removed whilst in a plastic state.
Once the plaster has reached an initial set, the cutting edge of the knife can be used to tidy any remaining rough edges on the articulation.